Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. Specifically, this video is going to cover Intel CPUs. We're going to show you how to install them, what CPUs we recommend, and all the different options as a whole. But do know this whole series is going to cover a ton of different topics. It's going to be CPUs, memory, drives, NVMe, how to install VMware, how to update your BIOS, how to do mass updates, and plenty more. Follow us and click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. Learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730. As I discussed, this will be the first video in our series that's going to be covering CPUs. So let's get started. Uh, there are two CPUs inside the Dell PowerEdge R730. It's an LGA 2011 3 socket. It takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 or in E5 2600V4. I will note though, if you want to use V4s, you need to make sure that your system has an updated BIOS. And realistically, you need to make sure you have an updated probably everything, firmware, uh, onboard diagnostics, etc. But realistically, what you need to make sure that you have um, is an updated BIOS to use the V4. Uh, we've seen where people will order a system, uh, they'll try to pop in a V4 and it doesn't work, and they're wondering why. Uh, they think they have either a you know, bad board or a bad CPU, and really what the problem is is that they just don't have an updated BIOS. So you can grab a, um, if, you, if you're in that situation right now, you can grab a cheap V3, uh, which we'll tell you a couple of recommendations here in a second, but you can grab a cheap V3, uh, throw that in, update your BIOS, and then now the V4s will work just great, okay? Uh, so on that note, what CPUs do we recommend for the R730? Well, there's, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Um, so on the low end, there's two CPUs that are our go-tos, the E52620V3 and the E52630 V3. Both of these are great low-end procs. Uh, when you're on a budget, this is definitely the route to go. Uh, you can get, um, uh, for the first one, the E52620V3, it's a hex core proc at 2.4 gigahertz, so you can pop two of those in, get 12 cores, and it's not gonna cost you a ton of money, so it's a great option. Or if you want a little bit more, you can get uh, the E52630 V3, which is gonna be an eight core, 2.4, also a great option. You just basically uh, bump it up two more cores, uh, which would be an extra four cores across two procs, so it's a, a great option. Uh, again, those are on the low end side. If you wanna go to what we call the uh, value CPUs, which is, these are my personal favorites, uh, you can get something like an E52660 V3, and E52660, 70 V3 or an E52680 V3. Uh, these are the great kind of middle range ones where you still get really, really great performance. Uh, you get great specs overall, but it's not going to totally break the bank, but they are going to cost a little bit more than the low end ones. Uh, so on the uh, E52660, which is my personal favorite, uh, you can get a 10 core at 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, if you go up to the E52670, you're going to bump up to 12 cores, but you're going to uh, get a little bit slower speed. It's going to be 2.3. Also a great option option or the E52680 which is uh, what I see a lot of people actually ordering. It's probably everyone else's favorite. Um, you're going to get uh, another 12 core there and it's going to be a 2.5. So all those are uh, really, really great options uh, on the value side. Uh, but some people are looking to uh, take this system and turn it into an insane box and really, really bump it up and max it out with some really high-end specs. So if you want a high-end CPU, uh, I recommend uh, the E52690 V4, the E52695 V4, uh, the E52697, 98, 99. Uh, all five of these CPUs are great high-end uh, CPUs that uh, won't break the bank. You could technically go up to an E52699A V4. Uh, but these are really, really expensive still, uh, where all the other high-end CPUs that I'm recommending aren't going to really break the bank. You can still get them for a, a good price overall. Um, so if you go out with an E52690 V4, uh, you're going to get a 14 core. If you go to uh, E52695, uh, that's going to be an 18. You're going to get another 18, and then you're going to get a 20. And if you go all the way up to the E52699, uh, you're going to get a 22 core. Uh, we'll put all the speeds over here as well for you. I mean, all these are honestly really great options that aren't going to be you know, as expensive as some of the new stuff on the 15th and the 14th gen where the CPUs cost you know, thousands of dollars for one CPU. Um, this is still going to get you something where you get some crazy amount of cores, but it isn't going to you know, break the bank overall. So, all right, now that we know a little bit about the, uh, the CPUs and the different options that we recommend, I want to show you how to actually install it. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and I'll be right back. 
All right, now I got my ESD gloves on and my ESD jacket. Um, I'm all set up and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and move all this out of the way, but I wanted to show you exactly what we needed before we started to actually do the install. Uh, you're gonna need a screwdriver. I just got this one because it's automatic, easy, um, or electric, I should say. Uh, we got our um, thermal grease here, which is really important. Uh, you got the CPUs you're gonna upgrade with and then a rag to clean the old thermal grease off. So let's get rolling. All right, so we're gonna open her up. First things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock, pretty much like any Dell server you've ever been in before. All right, so in this series, we're gonna cover uh, pretty much everything, I feel like, in this machine. Maybe not everything, because there's a lot going on in here, but we're gonna cover all the, the heart of it. But uh, since this is the first one, I just wanted to point out a couple things. Uh, you're gonna have uh, your fans, your back plane, your air baffle. Back here is where your nick goes. Uh, you have riser one and riser two, uh, riser three. Uh, under here is your dual power supplies. Under the air baffle itself is going to be your uh, dual um, heat sinks, dual CPUs, the 24 dim slots. Uh, that's kind of the, the heart of the system as a whole. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start by uh, getting into uh, how do I access the CPUs. Uh, you're going to need to make sure you remove the air baffle. All right. So it's relatively simple. You're just going to pull this up. And I always just say lift it straight up just to be safe uh, to make sure you don't accidentally catch it on anything else, a cable or anything. I am also going to go ahead and remove the uh, this fan bank here. You don't have to actually remove the fans to be able to get it, but just for the video sake so you have a, a clearer access and being able to just see the uh, what I'm doing with the CPUs, I am going to go ahead and uh, pop this off and you just lift these uh, two blue tabs straight up and they kind of um, lift up as a whole. Um, all right, so. Uh, this will just show you a little bit more. So now um, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, swap out the CPUs. Uh, it's really simple. We're going to take our uh, trusty screwdriver here. And we're just going to go ahead and unscrew everything. Now I like to do uh, the um, zigzag or cross pattern, uh, kind of like if you were changing a tire on a car. Uh, just makes it a little bit easier. All right, last one. And then when you pull the CPU, you just want to pull it straight up. Um, sometimes it does stick a little bit uh, because the thermal grease is on the bottom of the heat sink itself. Now you can see this CPU is, is older. The, the thermal grease is kind of dried up. So what I'm going to do is actually clean it while it's still in the socket. Now I'll tell you um, in advance, I don't always recommend cleaning it while it's in a socket. And some people don't want to even clean it at all, and that's fine if you just want to pull it out. Um, my only concern is sometimes uh, when you take the heat sink off, there's just a ton of thermal grease all over the place. What I want to avoid is having the thermal grease, like a chunk of it, accidentally fall off and land into the pins. So I just don't want that happening, okay? So in this case, what I'm gonna do is actually clean it while it's still in the uh, the socket itself uh, because it's, it's a very controlled uh, situation and there's not a ton of it and it's a little bit older and I can just kind of wipe it off and you know and it's there wasn't a bunch of it so there is some so caked around some of the edges and I'm gonna get it if it's actually on um, the bracket itself uh, that's part of the motherboard bracket or the socket bracket but if it's caked around the ends I'm not really you know overly concerned I just don't want chunks of it to fall off so all right so now um, in order to access it what you need to do is uh, take this latch right here you're gonna push it down and push it in and that'll pop up. And then once this pops up, you're gonna to come to this side and you're gonna push it down, push it in. And when you do this, you see this uh, bracket right here, you need this to come up so that the socket itself can come up. So what I like to do is if you push this down, it'll actually bring this up and you're in, okay? And now when you come in to grab it, what I recommend is to personally grab on the edges right here as opposed to right here. Uh, there's just, there's more uh, space to grab it. There's more free space on the edges. It's more open as far as the socket's concerned. It's just an easier way to pull it out. Um, and when you pull it out, um, you can do it one of two ways. Personally, I recommend just pulling it straight up. You need to be careful here because you don't want to accidentally, again, damage the pins. The pins are very, very fragile. Uh, I'm sure if you're doing this, you've been inside a, a server before or, or a desktop. The pins themselves are, are just so fragile. So that's the thing you have to be the most careful about in the situation because um, this is an LGA uh, 2011 socket, which means there's uh, 2,011 pins inside there. That's a lot of pins in a very, very small area that could easily get damaged, okay? So just be very careful. So I'm gonna grab it on the edges that have the most space and I'm gonna lift it straight up, okay? Now the other thing that you can do is if you kind of pin it to the side over here, 
you can kind of pin it and pull it straight up. But again, I recommend just pulling straight up, getting a good grasp of it, okay? Now, if you notice, I already have a tray over here. I like having a tray so that I can drop the CPU straight in. If you're not planning on using it again, you know, you can just throw it on the on the, the, works, the workbench that you're working on. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, I'll show you the bottom of these, you know, you bust any of the capacitors, uh, the resistors right here, the CPU will no longer work. So I like to just throw it right into a tray because you never know, you could use it as a backup, maybe you can resell it, uh, you, you know, who knows, maybe you can give it away to somebody and help them out, but uh, I just like to pre protect them because, you know, why damage something if you don't need to, right? <laughs> um, all right, so we are gonna be upgrading this and we're actually not upgrading it to one of the ones I recommend, which is kind of funny. This customer we're building for is actually going to be an E52620V4. Uh, that's what they wanted inside. So uh, what I wanted to note, the way that you line this up, you see this arrow right here? We can uh, zoom in and show you the arrow on the corner. So if you look at all the other corners, they don't have that uh, gold arrow. If you look at the motherboard over here, there is an arrow on there as well, okay? Uh, that lets you know this goes into that corner, very simple overall. I like to personally take uh, this side and kind of push it down and gently let it down. Uh, but you have to be, again, very, very careful when you're installing this because it's all about keeping the pins safe, okay? So I'm gonna grab right over here, uh, get the, uh, the big broad side. I'm gonna come in here gently put them in the corner and set it down, okay? Nice and gentle, all right? Um, one of the things I also wanted to, to note is a problem that I have seen people do when they pull up their CPU when they're taking it out, sometimes they drag it. And if you drag one of those edges, even just for a second, you can potentially just wipe out a row of these pins. Um, and that's just a situation you don't want to run into, okay? All right, so now I am going to uh, put this back down. Uh, the best way to do this is you want to put, push this down, you'll see this pops back up, and you need to lock it in with the, uh, this bracket over here. So you're going to pull it down on this latch, and you do this last first, this latch first, push it down and in, and you come back over here and you're going to push it down and in, and you're locked in. And now comes the fun part, we get to use our messy thermal grease. <laughs> Alright, so for the thermal grease, you need a good balance here. Um, I, like what I saw before when we just cleaned it, to me that wasn't enough thermal grease. Clearly it was fine because that CPU had been in there for about five, six years. So it had run for a while and worked you know, just fine. But I like to do uh, a little bit more. This is just my personal preference. You don't want to do too much though because if you go overboard, then it'll you know, come out on the sides. And again, you don't want it to get into a situation where it might get into your pins. So you need a nice you know, even balance overall, okay? So I like to kind of just uh, do a square and fill it up and then come back around. So to me, that's how I like to do it, um, and it gives me a decent amount overall. Um, and then you can do one of two things. Sometimes people like to uh, use a little plastic piece where you can spread it around. That works uh, great. Um, I personally just push the heat sink back on it, and when you push it, it just kind of almost like a sandwich when you push uh, jelly together, it just kind of squirts all to the side, so it'll be just fine. So all right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the heat sink back on. Um, so again, just make sure you line up all your screws properly. This is very easy. So we're just going to come in, line our screws up. And then we are going to get our screwdriver. And again, I told y'all I like to do the, uh, the zigzag or crisscross. So we'll put this one in first, and then we'll come over here. And we'll put this one in next. And then we'll come over here. And that's it. So just like that, you know, we'll knock out the second one in here a second, but you can see how quick and easy it really was to do. Overall, it's a pretty simple process. The main things that I just say as far as takeaways is just be careful for the pins, just be safe overall, and do us a favor. If one of the, the servers that you're using in your data center is an R730 or really, you know, any servers, uh, we would love an opportunity to, to quote you guys. Uh, we custom build servers. Uh, we build a ton of Dell, Supermicro, HPE. Uh, we'd love to help you out with your builds. Do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninja.com that's sales at cloudninja.com and hey if you made it this far do us a favor click that like smash that subscribe thanks for stopping by guys take care